Recall that what actually holds an atom together are the electrostatic forces felt by the electrons and the protons in the nucleus. And this electrostatic force can be described by Coulomb's law or Coulomb's equation that states the following. The force on either of the proton or the electron is given by K a constant times Q1, the Q or the charge of the protons, times Q2, the charge of the electrons, divided by the distance between them squared. And what Coulomb's law does, it describes the force an electron experiences due to the pull of the proton nucleus. So let's look at two atoms and let's compare these guys. First, let's look at hydrogen and then let's look at helium. Well, recall that hydrogen has exactly one proton and one neutron in its neutral state. And that means we can find the electrostatic force or the pull on this electron due to this proton by simply applying our Coulomb's equation. And this guy states that our force due to this electron or on this electron due to this proton is given by K, a constant, times the charge of our proton times the charge of our electron divided by our distance r between them squared. And this is the force that this guy feels due to this guy and also the force that this proton feels due to this electron. Now note that the forces are negative but they have the same magnitude. So now let's look at helium. Remember, the outermost electrons are the electrons that will be pulled away. The inner electrons found on lower energy levels will not be pulled away first. So in helium, we now have two protons and two electrons. So our nucleus is composed of two protons and our shells are composed of one electron each. So now we have an inner shell and an outermost shell. And recall that electrons on the outermost shell will be pulled away. So this is the electron we have to worry about. This is the electron that will be pulled away. So if we calculate the force that this guy experiences due to this proton nucleus, we'll see a discrepancy. And this discrepancy comes from something called the shielding effect. Now this innermost atom or this innermost electron creates a shielding effect. In other words, inner electrons surrounding our nucleus shield the outermost electron from some of that charge due to our protons, decreasing the net pull of the nucleus on our outermost electron. Now the final amount of charge felt by this outermost electron due to our proton nucleus is called the effective nuclear charge. In other words, because there is a second electron found even closer to our uh, nucleus, that means the charge that this guy will feel due to this proton nucleus will be less than what it would feel if this electron wasn't here. Now that means if we use the same exact formula for Coulomb's law for this guy, we'll see, we'll get this result. In other words, the force that this guy feels, this charge due to our proton uh, nucleus, this guy, divided by r squared times k, will be greater than the actual force that this guy feels. Why? Well, because some of this positive charge will be dissipated to this electron. So that means our final effective nuclear charge will be less. So the way we find our effective nuclear charge is using the following formula. Our effective nuclear charge given by Z, F, equals, equals to the nuclear charge or the actual nuclear charge of our proton nucleus minus the average number of electrons separating our outermost electron and our proton nucleus. And we see that for helium, if our nuclear charge on our proton nucleus is 2, then this guy actually feels a charge of 1.69 because we're subtracting the charge that this guy experiences. So at the end, this outermost electron 
will experience on average less pull. So let's compare the effect of nuclear charge of the following two atoms. Let's look at lithium and beryllium. Now notice that beryllium is one guy over to the right on our periodic table. And that means it has four protons and four electrons, while lithium has three protons and three electrons. Let's compare their atomic structure. So the atomic structure of lithium is the following. Two of its electrons are found in the innermost shell, the 1s shell, and one electron, because it only has three electrons, is found in the outermost 2s shell. Now let's look at the atomic structure of beryllium. This guy has one extra electron, or one more electron, than lithium. Now that means that it also, just like lithium, has two electrons on the 1s inner orbital, but now be, because it has an extra electron, it has two electrons in the outermost 2s orbital. So the ratio in lithium of inner electrons to outer electrons is 2 to 1, while the ratio of inner to outer electrons in beryllium is 2 to 2. So the ratio is greater in this guy. The significance of this is the following. Because our ratio of inner to outer is greater, that means the inner electrons will take away or shield more charge. So lithium will experience a strong shielding effect due to these inner electrons. So this single outer electron will not experience as much charge as it would if these guys weren't here. Now let's compare this guy. Notice that in this guy, we have one more electron in, outer, in our outer shell, <coughs> shell. And what that basically means is that because our ratio of inner to outer <coughs> is smaller, that means this shielding effect will not be as great because now we have an extra electron floating around in the outer shell. So these guys will experience more charge than this single electron on the lithium. And what that means is that these two electrons will be pulled closer to the nucleus than here. And therefore, the radius of this atom will be smaller than the radius of this atom. And that's because of the following. They both have a 1s and a 2s orbital. So, technically, their radius should be the same, but it's not. It's smaller in this guy because it has a weaker shielding effect. In other words, the two electrons found on the outermost atom, on the outermost shell, experience more charge and so therefore are pulled closer. So, once again, the shielding effect is not as great in beryllium as it is in lithium, because the extra electron in beryllium is added to the same uh, energy level, the same uh, 2s orbital. And so that means because there's more charge on the electron on the outermost shell, it will experience more pull, and so it will be pulled closer, therefore increasing the effective nuclear charge on the beryllium versus the lithium. In other words, there will be a greater effect of nuclear charge in beryllium than in lithium because of this extra electrons. And in fact, this is the trend that we see. As we go from the left to the right across the period, our nuclear effective charge increases, decreasing our radius.